worship with Beth and United Methodist Church. I'm Mary Jane. And I'm Autumn. We work with our youth and children here at Bethany. Today is Autumn's last Sunday with us before taking her position at Camp Glisten. We're gonna miss you, Autumn, but we wish you well. I'm gonna miss you all so much, but I'm excited to step into a new role at Glisten. Today's worship emphasis is on back to school. Whether homeschooled, virtual, or in person, know that we are in prayer for each of you. And we now present a video from our youth and children celebrating our students going back to school. We hope you enjoy seeing their sweet and smiling faces. Eighth grade. Christopher, third grade. Hi, I'm Ava, and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Eva Daphne Adams, and I'm going to be in third grade. What's your name? Grayson, I'm in second grade. What's your name? Levi. What grade are you in? PK. PK. Yep. <laughs> My name's Amani, and I'm going into fifth grade. My name is McCartney and I'm going into ninth grade. I am Miss Bella Crow and I'm going to sixth grade. Hey, my name is Jack and I'm going to seventh grade and I'm 12 years old. Hi, I'm Caitlin and I'm in fifth grade. Hi, I'm in the first grade. I love you and I miss you. Hello, my name is Sinai. I am 11 years old. And I go to sixth grade. Hello, my name is Tyler. I am five years old and I'm in kindergarten. Uh, my name is Foster and I'm a sophomore. Uh, I'm Luke Vance and I'm going to the 11th grade at McEachin High School. Hello, my name is Tari. I'm 16 and I'm going to the 11th grade.
I invite you to join me in prayer. Loving God, thank you for the gift of another day and a time set aside to come before you. You, Most High God, are worthy and deserving of our love, devotion, and obedience, for you have shown us the power of your love. Forgiving God, we humble ourselves before you and acknowledge that we often fail to love you and each other. Put our broken and contrite hearts back together and continue your work of transforming us from the inside out. Giving God, you have and will continue to bless us. So hear our heartfelt hymns of praise and thanksgiving. Faithful God, we are in an unusual time. It is a period of challenge and change. And this beginning of a new school year is different from what is imagined, expected, or truly desired by students, parents, faculty, and staff. Please help us to remember that you are faithful and that you continue to walk with us even when our paths take an unexpected new turn. Lord, we pray for the safety and well-being of administrators, faculty, and staff as they go about the task of providing new learning opportunities for students. Grant them all that is needed to navigate through this time. May they seek your wisdom and guidance in all things. We pray for the safety and well-being of students of all ages as they begin this new season of learning. May they yearn to grow in wisdom and stature and work in ways that please you. Lord, we also pray for the safety and well-being of parents and guardians as they confront the challenge of releasing their child into a new school year. May they seek your wisdom and your comfort. We now lift a prayer for the schools in Bethany's surrounding community. Bernie Elementary. Floyd Middle School. Osborne High School. Russell Elementary. Smitha Middle School, South Cobb High School. Now each Bethany household will name and lift a prayer for the schools where their children or grandchildren attend or where they or family members work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and help us to place our trust and hope for the good of our community, our nation, and our world in your perfect love and ongoing work in our lives. Now we pray the prayer that Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
how to give, I wanted to take a couple minutes to discuss why we give. Financial giving is both a spiritual discipline and a practical need. God invites us to give 10% of our harvest back to the support of the church. We give it such as the ministries may continue to serve the church and community and relieve the suffering as these times require. These ministries include Bethany members contributing canned goods, Ziploc bags, and volunteer time to Hands-On Atlanta's food distribution at Milford Baptist Church, reaching the needs of our community. Earlier this year, Bethany raised money for Camp Glisten Scholarship for summer camp. As summer camp was canceled because of the pandemic, Bethany will give a portion of this fund to the camp's Stand in the Gap Relief Fund. Bethany is always grateful for your continued giving and wants to encourage new givers to begin. The easiest way to give regularly is to designate your gift to Bethany through your bank's bill pay service. You may also mail a check to the church at Bethany UMC, 760 Hurt Road, Smyrna, Georgia, 30082. Or you may go to BethanyUMC.net, click the Donate button in the upper right hand part of this home page. Let us pray. Dear God, we give thanks to you and for your generosity to us. Bless those who give, those who wish to give but cannot, and bless the ministry that will be done through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. school to start back. 
I know that this school year is going to look a lot different for some of you. Some of you are going to do virtual learning from home. Some will do face-to-face -face learning at school. And some will be homeschooled. Hey, Autumn. How are you? Good. I'm so excited. Look at my new backpack. Ooh, I really like it. How about showing us what you have there for school? Uh, I'm all ready. I have my pencils. My scissors, you have to have scissors. Yes. A glue stick. Yes. Crayons, the best part. I have some folders to stay organized. I have a spiral notebook. Yes. And last, I have my laptop for some virtual learning. Yes, that's definitely gonna be needed this school year, isn't it? But you know, there are a few things you forgot to pack in your backpack there. What? I have let me let, let me show you. Let me show you. How about some love? Um, so, so it's love. Where do I? How about some kindness? Huh. Um, How about forgiveness? Okay. <laughs> and patience. Okay. Grace. Okay. And lastly, but let's not forget. Jesus. You're probably wondering, how are you gonna pack those in your backpack, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's not what you're gonna do. You're gonna pack those into your heart. This school year is gonna be very different from the years before. We're gonna to need to show some love, some kindness, some forgiveness, some patience grace, and even more than we ever have before. We want to make sure we are being the best person we can be and show others that we have these traits and can be there for them. Then we need to make sure that we have Jesus here. Jesus needs to be in our hearts each and every day, whether we're at home or at school or anywhere. He's gonna guide us and be with us no matter what is going on. And in these uncertain times, we will always have a friend that will never leave us and that's Jesus. That makes me feel better to know that he will always be with me. When I'm waking up and eating my healthy breakfast to start the day, Jesus is with me. When I meet my new teachers and my new friends in my class, Jesus is with me. When I'm nervous or sad or scared, Jesus is with me. When I'm playing with my friends, Jesus is with me. And when I am praying at night and thanking God for my teachers, my friends, and my school, Jesus is with me. Yes, Jesus is with each of us all the time. Isn't that great news? He will be with you as you all go back to school, but just to make sure you always keep him right here because you're gonna need him. Now, boys and girls, let's pray together like we do when we're here together at church. Pray after me. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for always being by my side. Thank you for always being by my side. I know that if I get nervous or afraid, I know that if I get nervous or afraid, you will be there with me. You will be there with me. I know that I can talk to you anytime. I know that I can talk to you anytime, day or night, day or night. And for that, I am so thankful. And for that, I am thankful. Please be with each of us. Please be with each of us as we go back to school. As we go back to school. I pray this all in your name. I pray this all in your name. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for today is from Romans 15, verses 4 through 6. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for letting us feel your presence among us in this worship, for speaking to us in the songs, in the children's smiles, in the prayers, 
in the reading of the Holy Scripture. Help us, Lord, continue to experience your presence and hear your voice in this sermon. Overshadow whatever I've prepared, that we might hear from you, that we might be touched by you, that we might be transformed by you. This prayer we offer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. You may have noticed that I've been traveling around the church building to deliver the sermon each week. Well, I thought that since we are celebrating and praying for our students, educators, school administrators, and everyone else involved in making education happen, that I would preach from my office and show you some of my love for learning. If you look behind me, you'll see my degrees from Spelman College and the Georgia Institute of Technology and Emory University. And you know what? I even found my high school diploma from Westminster. Obviously, I love learning. I wouldn't have chosen to attend some of the most challenging schools in the state if I didn't enjoy learning and pushing myself academically. I love learning for learning's sake. I love to play with ideas and draw connections between different perspectives and assumptions. But what I realized in high school though is that for all the things that I learned and all the tests that I took, if I didn't turn some of that knowledge into wisdom or action, it wasn't, wasn't really as useful as I thought it was. When I took my road test to get my driver's license or even in driving now, it matters not what I know about physics or Newton's laws of motion if that knowledge doesn't translate into how I maneuver the car when I approach something in the road. You may be thinking, well, Pastor Joya may just be a nerd. Well, yes, I am. But we're all born to learn. Anyone who has been around a baby for any period of time knows that it isn't long before they learn the routine for feedings and snuggling and what makes them comfortable and how to get what they want. We learn so much in the first years of life. We learn how to speak, feed ourselves, walk, read, write, and simple arithmetic. Now, there are some things that we learn because we need the knowledge for future learning. You must learn your letters before you can learn words. And some things we learn to help us better understand ourselves and the world around us, like history, science, and anthropology. Some things we learn to help us better express ourselves, like art, writing, and music. There are still other things that we learn to help us live well. How to balance a checking account. We learn how to read and follow instructions to put furniture together. We learn how to transform conflict. We can learn all of the time because we are all born learners. Pastor Pam suggested this scripture for the sermon today because it discusses both hope and receiving instruction. Receiving instruction is learning. As Christians, we are called to be lifelong learners since a disciple is a student who seeks to emulate, to be like her or his teacher. Our teacher is Jesus. We are to spend our lives learning about and seeking to act in ways consistent with who Jesus is and what Jesus taught. At the end of his theologically dense letter to the church in Rome, Paul helps the Jewish and Gentile followers of Jesus understand why they study and learn from the scriptures. It's to have hope. This hope will help them remain steadfast and encourage them though they lived in difficult times. The Bible is full of stories of individuals and groups of people who tried to faithfully do what God commanded so that things would go well with them. The Psalms are songs and prayers that speak to the breadth of the human experience in relationship with God. 
from Scripture, we know that God's people were imperfect and sometimes they were outright disobedient. But God's love remains steadfast. The scriptures also remind us of the call for offering welcome to the outsider. One of the challenges in the Roman church was that some were Jewish and some were Gentiles. There, were baked in divi- there was baked in division since the Jews were not traditionally to associate with Gentiles. Paul taught them all to learn a new way of being together as one body from study of the scriptures. Now, a side note, just to be clear, he was talking about the sacred writings of the Old Testament since the New Testament hadn't even been written yet. But this image that we get in the scripture It's beautiful. People of different backgrounds and beliefs coming together because of Jesus to glorify God. And they come together in song. What I love about this image is that the song is in harmony, not unison. The different groups may maintain some of their difference, but together, Their differences work together to make something beautiful. Right now, one of the things that we miss so much is singing together as a collective body with various voice parts in harmony. The image of the community of believers is one that is welcoming of difference that is still somehow, that still somehow comes together as one voice. One of the strongest parts of our witness as Christians is to offer to others the radical welcome that God offers to us through Jesus. As the Bible says in Romans 5, 8, but God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We know we come to Jesus a little jealous, a little prideful, a little hateful, a little selfish, and many other ways that separate us from being able to fully love God and our neighbors. But we still come to God. We still know that God loves us and wants us to be better, but God doesn't cast us out while we're on the way to being better. As Christians, we get to offer that kind of welcome to others so that they might meet Jesus through the Spirit at work in us. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. How are we learning? How are we receiving instruction from the Scriptures? Reading the Bible is important. But it's kind of like only reading a math book without doing the practice problems and also not having a teacher explain the concepts to you. You could learn math that way, but it sticks better if you learn it and you learn it faster through practice and through a bit of explanation. How are we practicing the knowledge that we gain from reading the scriptures? Here's an example. I hope that you'll sign up for the Bible study that's coming in September. You'll be in a group and this will give you some live teaching. But good learners must also find a way to practice what they learn so that the lessons stick. Here's an idea for practice this week sparked by the Romans text today. Offer welcome to someone who is not like you. With the distancing requirements, this becomes more difficult and more important since most of us are a bit disoriented and disconnected these days. Make room for people to have their six feet and offer them a kind word. And sometimes welcoming others doesn't even begin with an actual person, but it begins in our minds with considering how another person is experiencing life these days. Imagine how someone who may think differently than you 
may also feel like you. They may also be afraid, grieving, or frustrated. Empathy is an entryway to welcome. When I started working on this sermon, I began to wonder what makes a good learner? I imagined that similar characteristics would translate from education to lifelong learning, especially learning to follow Jesus. I asked a retired and a current educator in our church, and I asked my son, since he's a student. And I got an amazing list of practices, attitudes, and characteristics. As I share some of this list with you, I'm going to read through some of them. I invite you to consider how they relate to your approach to life and especially your life of faith. Here's the list. Good learners realize that learning is not isolated to school. They are willing to try, especially new or difficult things. Good learners are willing to make mistakes, to ask questions, and to ask for help. They are willing to listen to someone else's perspective. Good learners realize that they don't know everything and they're honest about their strengths and weaknesses. They work hard and are persistent. They develop endurance. They have discipline. Good learners are prepared for when things don't come easily and are difficult. They have a desire to learn. They listen, reflect, and interrogate what they've heard. Good learners figure out how best they learn. They master the basics and they master the foundations. Good learners build upon what they've already learned. We are born learners and we are all capable of being good learners. Nothing in that list that I just read or the complete list that I was given, none of those things are restricted by IQ level or a certain educational background. To be a good learner requires that we choose to be a good learner, whatever our capacity is. Are we open to new ideas, new ways of doing things, or new ways of relating? Learning implies change. Think about the first Christians. They learned that death could be overcome. They learned that they didn't have to be circumcised to be a part of the family of God. They learned that Caesar was not the ultimate power. They learned that love was more powerful than fear. Now, of course, they were able to learn these things through the illumination and grace of the Holy Spirit, but they had to be willing to open their hearts and their minds. These first Christians learned what sin was and that Jesus somehow justified them and called them to live in a new way. We are called to be lifelong learners of the gospel of Jesus Christ, such that our lives may be long, really, for our lives to be eternal. The more we learn about Jesus, learn from Jesus, and do as Jesus, the more hope we have. He asks us to focus on love of God and love of neighbor. Paul here reminds us that instruction from scripture can encourage us and keep us steadfast. May this learning and instruction from the Holy Word bring us closer to God in harmony among our church and in loving relationship with our neighbors. Let us pray. 
Open our minds to welcome you, O oh God. Help us to thirst for your holy knowledge and give us the endurance and joy to learn the way that leads to hope and love. May our education change us that we might change the world in the name of Christ. Amen.
not beginning as we wish. Nevertheless, I send you forth with these words from Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Have an awesome week. <music>